Oh boy, another package came in the mail. It says fragile. It's a fluorescent lamp that a user from Lighting Gallery sent me. Lighting Gallery user Don93S. It's a very special fluorescent lamp, but uh, it's not vintage or rare, at least I don't think it is. And uh, I am going to be putting it into regular use. Here's the story. Here's my lovely manual preheat desk lamp. One of my manual preheat desk lamps. And uh, you may remember that for as long as I've owned this lamp, I've used the fluorescent lamp in it that it came with. A modern General Electric daylight lamp made in Indonesia. And that lamp has been working great. In fact, I've put about five or 6,000 hours on it, which is pretty good. But uh, unfortunately, that lamp, it didn't go EOL, but it actually went mercury starved. Um, back around just before Christmas, it actually went mercury starved, which I did not expect. Because um, those Indonesian lamps aren't known for going mercury starved. Yeah, it, uh, I noticed that it had gradually, very slowly over the course of weeks, been getting dimmer and dimmer. And eventually, uh, it just got so dim, it was uselessly dim, it didn't light up this table at all. So it was near Christmas, it was about time for me to go home for Christmas break, and I thought, well, okay then, I'll just stick it out until it's time to go home for Christmas break, and uh, when I come back, I'll bring one of my vintage GE Cool White lamps back up with me. Uh, and also, at this time, I put a notice on Lighting Gallery, I said that, if anybody had a 5,000 Kelvin fluorescent lamp that they'd like to send or sell to me to get in touch with me. 5,000 Kelvin is not a very common fluorescent lamp color, although all the major manufacturers make them, but you usually can't get them in stores. It's a color halfway between cool white and daylight, and it's a beautiful color, a pure paper white color. It's absolutely fantastic. It's among the highest rendering, highest color rendering fluorescent lamps too usually above 90% rendering, some of them as high as 99%, so practically as good as an incandescent lamp. And I put a want ad on Lighting Gallery, but no one ever got back to me. So I went home for Christmas, and I planned on taking uh, a cool white lamp back with me to replace the lamp in this desk lamp with. Well, I forgot to do that, so after I came back here, I went to Home Depot, and for a whopping $7, I bought this... Philips Alto cool white lamp. The only reason I bought it is you can see it says cool white plus which I thought meant it was a high color rendering cool white but I've since been told I was since told on lighting gallery that it's just a plain old cool white which that sucks seven dollars for a old school cool white lamp seems kind of a ripoff except for one thing you can see this lamp was made in Holland and I've been told that these Holland made Philips lamps even the Alto ones with the characteristic green end caps are incredibly high quality, arguably some of the best fluorescent lamps you can buy today. So I guess that's fine. So I decided to stick with it. Well, later, a couple weeks after I came back from Christmas, Don sent me a message, told me he had some 5,000 Kelvin lamps and he'd send one to me. So we worked a deal out and uh, that is what should be in this package. So yeah, I'd really like to see, I've never seen a 5000 Kelvin fluorescent lamp before. I've seen tri, you know, modern triphosphor ones. The one in that package should be an old school halo phosphate phosphor 5000 Kelvin lamp, which I've been really interested to see. I've never seen one before. So, let's tear this package open and see what kind of a lamp we have. Pop the uh, end off this shipping tube here. I'll tell you what, nobody knows how to pack fluorescent lamps like lighting collectors. Ooh, look at this, very nicely wrapped indeed. Uh, this end's already open. Oh crap, I just realized there's more than one lamp in here. Holy shoot, there appears to be three of them. I thought he was sending me only one. Oh man. Wow. I think they all survived. I don't hear any glass rattling. Cool, so let's open one of them up. Here's one of the lamps. Check this out. Totally awesome. It is a Vitalite F15 T8. Well, it doesn't even give a color. And there's a reason for that is because Vitalite 
basically is the color. That was the name for uh, 5000K lamps. Vitalite was originally a Durotest brand. Durotest was uh, one of the smaller manufacturers of fluorescent lamps, but among one of the highest quality manufacturers ever. Durotest originally held the Vitalite name. They were called the Durotest Vitalite, and they were 5000 Kelvin lamps. But uh, this lamp is a newer lamp from, I believe, after Durotest uh, went out of business. And I forget who held the Vitalite name after that, or if some holding company kept the Vitalite name, I don't know. But this is a just branded Vitalite. It says 15 watt T8 preheat trigger, which is something you don't see on a lamp made this recently. Just means that it can be run on both preheat and trigger start ballast. That's something you normally didn't see on fluorescent lamps after like the 1960s or 70s. Um, if you're keen, you might notice this looks like a Sylvania manufacturing code. Indeed, this is nothing more than a rebranded Sylvania Design 50, which is a uh, Sylvania's 5000K lamp. This is just a rebranded one of those. Either way, this is, should be a very high quality lamp, made in the USA. And I'm not sure, but I believe that date code says 1999. So not vintage, but uh, old enough that it should be very good lamp. You know, it, this was made before all the mercury limiting crap went into place. So it uh, should be awesome. So enough talking, let's actually test this lamp in my desk lamp. Don uh, notified me something really interesting. He told me that he, he, he has a huge batch of these lamps that he got. And he said that for pretty much all of them that he tried, they would not start on a preheat system at first. He could not get them to start on a preheat ballast. He had to put these in a rapid start ballast first, let them run a while in a rapid start ballast, and then afterwards they would start and run just fine in a preheat ballast and run great thereafter. So I'm going to try this in this desk lamp, but we'll see if this starts in this lamp or it gives me some trouble. I'll be really interested to see. It's no matter either way. If it doesn't start and run, I'll just uh, wait until I can put it on a rapid start or instant start system and break it in, and uh, then it should be fine. But let's find out. All right, the lamp is in. I'm excited. I've never seen a halo phosphate 5000 Kelvin lamp, and we have no clue if this thing's even going to start. It might be stubborn, but let's find out. I'll give it a very good preheat. Cathodes don't strike an arc. Eh, nope. Oh, it's, it's flickering. It's trying. Oh, that was close. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. It's noticeably warmer than a straight daylight lamp. And notice, this thing, you know, it, it took several attempts, but this thing is running great. On preheat now. Don said once I finally did get it to start, I'd probably see it swirling a lot. The reason it's swirling and the reason it's, it's difficult to start on preheat is because the cathodes have some impurities on them that need to burn off, pretty much. But I don't see swirling either. And it's still running, it hasn't extinguished. I figure uh, if it started at all it would extinguish afterwards, but no, it's, it's holding steady. It's not flickering or swirling or anything. I can also see that it's slightly dimmer than your usual halo phosphate lamp. Uh, the 5000 Kelvin phosphor was also quite inefficient at producing light. Um, it traded uh, brightness for color rendering properties. It looks fantastic. Beautiful. Here's the lamp with uh, white paper behind it and oh man, the color rendering is just fantastic. Here's some colored floppy disks. Look, even the warmer colors, red, orange, yellow, they look great. Under a daylight lamp, these would look quite dull because there's not a lot of red light output, obviously. But they look fantastic under this lamp. And some green and purple discs. Here's the box. Color rendering is just fantastic. My skin, the color of my fingernails looks very natural under a daylight lamp. Uh, your fingernails look a little bit purple usually. Color of my skin looks natural just as if I was out in the sun. That's exactly what 
all of this looks like. It would be as if it was daytime and I had my curtains open. This is what I'd expect it all to look like. It looks just fantastic. Beautiful, beautiful color rendering from these Halo Phosphate 5000 Kelvin lamps. Absolutely gorgeous. I feel bad. I kind of feel like I'm letting the wonderful color properties of this lamp go to waste by having it behind a, or in front of a yellowed reflector. Perhaps I'll friggin make some retro bright sometime and fix this yellowed reflector, turn it white again. Well, I'll tell you what, this lamp's working just fine. I'll restart it here and it starts right up. Let's take the other two lamps and see if they start up. All right, here's lamp the second. Let's see how this starts up, if it does. And it's not preheating. Oh, it's kind of loose in the sockets. This one must have slightly bent pins or something. Oh, oh I think it's in now. There we go. Almost. It wants to. There we go. Oh, oh, here's some swirling. This one's swirling. See if it extinguishes. Oh, swirling's getting bigger. I think you can see it there. Oh, the whole length of the lamp swirling now. Also, it's a dim on this end compared to this end. Oh, she's a swirling. Too bad I don't have a setup I could use. Oh, <laughs> I was just going to say a setup I could use to measure the arc voltage, see how high it is, because that's what's happening. The arc voltage gets uh, really high, and it's not enough for 120 volts to sustain the arc. Well, it rose high enough that it extinguished, so let's try it again. All right, we're running again, and no swirling now. I think we're all set for this one now. Ah, I see some mercury vaporizing off this end. Plenty of mercury in these lamps. It's uniformly bright now. Alright, lamp the second seems to be doing just fine now. Still takes a couple of tries to start, but it's not swirling anymore. So let's try the third and final lamp. Alright, here's the third lamp. Oh, first try. Look at that. No swirling, no brightness variation on either end. I see some mercury burning off the ends. Oh, looks like we're in the clear on this lamp. It started right up first try. Yeah, no problem. Oh, looks like I had a lot better luck than Dawn. Dawn had some that would just re relentlessly refuse to start on preheat and he had to stick them on a rapid start fixture to uh, get them running. Oh, fair enough. Can't complain there. That second lamp gave us a bit of fun, though. I decided to cut some paper out and stick behind the uh, yellow reflector here, so because I do want to take advantage of uh, the wonderful color and the great color rendering properties uh, of these lamps. So that's what I've decided to do, and it's very, very beautiful. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm extremely happy with these lamps and uh, I really really appreciate it I got three of them now so that should be good to do me if I were to run them full time in this desk lamp that should do me geez I don't know at least eight or ten years I'd say so uh, there you go guys hope you enjoyed and I'll see you later